Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spohr. to welcome back actually to the show today, Tony Bubb. She is known as the professional lover of life on LinkedIn. She quit her job over six years ago and moved to an island without plans or knowing anyone. The experience changed her life forever. Now Tony uses healing and transformational coaching to help thought leaders and wellness brands build memorable experiences and like-minded communities through marketing, branding, and culture consulting. Tony makes the process fun along the way by incorporating engaging content where she is known to sing, rap, and get serious. That's quite the combination. Uh, Tony is an impact and creative consultant who loves serving people that are making a difference in our world, but most importantly, our souls. Welcome back. I'm just super excited to be able to speak with you. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back. I know. I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation. And, and obviously, since the last time we spoke, a lot has changed in the world. Um, everything. And I would really love to get your thoughts on how you see uh, the landscape of leadership shifting during this time. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, when all of this kind of happened, I went to my boyfriend. I go, I, I felt last fall that something big was coming. Something big was going to happen in the world that was going to shift and change everything. And I started going back through my text messages and my emails and I go, I know I told like a select you know, number of people. I'm like, I got to find new text messages. And I literally, I found them and I, I wrote, I said, I feel like something's coming. I feel like a change is coming. And it's interesting. I was very, very much into leadership and personal and professional development and the culture changing about two or three years ago, or especially, I guess, since I, I left, you know, and went to the island, it was something that I was very passionate about changing. And I just struggled with, I struggled with getting people to understand why this was so important that that we needed to bridge the gap between personal and professional development and it's interesting people talk about it all the time and then we've got all these fancy buzzwords for it but many people still weren't taking action and i believe that this is taking place to kind of push people in the direction that the world has been needing to go in for a very long time and I feel that the, all of the resources are out there. They're very fragmented and not streamlined at all. And it's time to bring everything together, especially our faith and our spirituality and, and understand the importance of that in our workplace. And we can't just leave that at the door anymore. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, our work, our career, you know, isn't separate from our spirituality and our deepest values and beliefs. It's, it's central to it. You know, um, everything starts with the essence of, of who we are. And for so long in society, we've treated our spirituality and our faith as something as this this separate personal thing as if it needs to be separated from our work and other areas of our life. And, and it really couldn't be <laughs> more the opposite actually. And just what you're saying about uh, how this current <clears throat> environment we're experiencing with Corona and, and how it's, it's forcing us to go within I believe that too. I, I've always believed that every experience in our life serves a purpose <clears throat> and that now, now more than ever, now better than ever is the right time for us to go within and get honest with ourselves about what we really want, 
right? And, and also to allow ourselves, our faith, you know, our, our purpose and who we are to shine. Uh, I think it's interesting that uh, they usually say that pe people usually don't make change unless two things happen. If, unless something significantly changes their life, like abruptly, like a trauma, or they realize that a need isn't being met. And I think it's interesting that a lot of times people think that something bad has to happen. But also, I think this is showing people that a lot of their basic needs haven't been met. And I think it's all coming to, to the surface that even like their need for true connection and compassionate communication and relationships, I think people are realizing now more than ever that that is something that they need and it's been significantly missing in their lives. So that something bad doesn't necessarily have to happen for you to have an aha moment and realize that something significant is missing in your life and that you can keep trying to check the boxes off and obtain the material things and accomplishments, but you're never going to be fully satisfied, basically. And I think that's what this is really pushing us all to, to understand right now. Yeah, I agree. I, it, it's unfortunate, you know, it shouldn't take um, a trauma or some type of, you know, bad experience for us to come to that realization. But that is what happens all too often. And that's what happened with me a few years ago when I was transitioning in my life as well. I think it's because so many of us are conditioned uh, to believe that there is this cookie cutter way that we're supposed to live our lives. And we don't even realize how we're basically living um, comfortably unhappy right it's kind of like right. we're just going through the motions existing and not really living and with an event like this it's really uh shaking a lot of people awake basically right and i think people are also understanding what we've taken for granted I mean, when I moved to the island, I remember I had so many clothes. I was always so into buying clothes and having high heels, which is crazy because I, I'm so tall and I actually hate wearing high heels. <laughs> but, you know, it was like I had to be cool. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that. And uh, when I went to the island, I literally had like nothing. I had no clothes. <laughs> I bought uh, underwear at CVS, and I, I always remember this to this day because they said wedgie free, and I'm like, that's hilarious. And it just made me appreciate everything that I had, but also how to live a more simple life. And it's interesting, someone reached out to me today on LinkedIn, and they were talking to me about, you know, how they're quarantined and, you know, things are really hard for them right now. They're, they're, they said they're eating citrus and, and water or something like that. I go, okay, it's like, well, you have internet, right? And you have a roof over your head and a place to sleep. And he's like, actually, yeah. He's like, that's a really, you know, simple way of putting it. And I really appreciate that perspective. And so I think that's really what it's helping people to do is shift perspectives and appreciate the simple things in life, uh, like the relationships that it's almost like reversing everything, I, I think. You know, I think that's what it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's interesting you say that too. I, I had read something online about um, in Venice, I think it was Venice, right? How, uh, you know, the water there has been traditionally pretty polluted, um, but the dolphins have returned hmm. since that's this whole thing has happened and air is clearer and uh, so what you said about getting back to basics essentially just really resonated, right? And I think that's happening not just with us, but with the planet right now. We're essentially going through a reset. And the way that we've traditionally led in a patriarchy type of society what got us to where we are now is not what is going to get us to where we want to be moving forward. Right. We need to lead 
in a more mindful way. We need to lead from within. And what you're saying about, you know, us having the opportunity to increase our, our connectedness, it's so important. Well, I love how you, you said about the reset. I think that's the perfect word. I was trying to figure out the word. I was like, reset, that's perfect. And it's interesting. I think I might've been talking to you or a couple people about this the other day. It's almost like all of, all of the things that you've been thinking about, worrying about, stressing about, it's almost like they're, you're, they're all put into, in your, like right in front of your face right now. So like, let's say you weren't getting along with your spouse or let's ha say you're having issues with your children. It's like, it's all in this one container, like literally, and you're, you're having to face all of that, like almost all of your fears and all of your problems and your issues. And then if you're a leader, if you don't have a peace of mind, if you don't have a solid foundation that you've created, then there is rockiness. And when it comes to leading your team, I guarantee that they can feel that, you know, rockiness and that affects how your team performs. And it's not to say that you have to be perfect. It's not that you, you can't express emotion or express concern, but it's how you then react versus respond to situations that are high stress. And I think a lot of leaders are finding that this is, this is a, a, stre a high stress time and, and how are they reacting to it versus responding? What are your thoughts about that? Ah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, uh, basically what's happening right now is anyone who was sort of operating on a, on a crumbling foundation, you know, right. um, that is being magnified right now. Right. It absolutely is. In order to be an effective leader, not just an effective leader, but a sustainable leader, right? Ooh, because sustainable yeah. implies a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. In order to be a sustainable leader, we have to walk our talk. We have to be on our own solid ground in order to help others develop theirs. Right. I completely agree. I love how you come in with these magical words, by the way. It's like, <laughs> are they magical? I was like, magnify. Oh yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Sustainable leader. Oh, that's divine. I love it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I want to tell a little story, I think, because I don't think people understand that even if you are born a natural leader, how it's still a skill that needs to be developed because when I started off in management, I was in my early 20s. Well, I mean, I started off in leadership roles at a very young age, probably in my, my teen, as a teenager. But when I got into my professional career, I mean, I was overseeing teams of 50 and I had no one teaching me how to actually lead. And for the first time, it, I realized what it was like for people not to like you <laughs> and you, you didn't understand why. And since I had no one teaching me, it took me several years of finally figuring out that, okay, in order to be a good leader, I got to figure out what I'm doing wrong and what I can do better. And what I did was like, I, I want to know, like, I want to know the truth. I don't care if it hurts my feelings. I want to be better at this. So I would go and ask my employees, like, what am I doing wrong? What do you not like that I'm doing? What can I do better? What can we do within the workplace that would make things easier on you? So I just started having these conversations with people that most people are afraid to have because they don't want to hear things that are bad about themselves. But I say all this to say that it took many years of development because I had to do it on my own. I never had a guide. I never had anyone to help me. I read some books back then, uh, leadership books, but really it's, it's something that if you know how to do it and you have the, the tools that it makes it so much easier, especially when you're a leader and you don't have that much time anyways. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. And you know, what you said about feedback and, and not wanting to hear that feedback is so true. Um, but again, that goes back to how most people are conditioned to believe 
that you know hearing that has to be a negative experience right but right. everything is all about perception and in order for us to achieve our goals in order for us to continue to experience sustainable growth we we have to have that feedback in order to value uh where we're at and what we want we have to have experiences that are a contrast if that makes sense yeah well i love to hear your thoughts around so this is what i think of when when you think about leading from within and how you develop that self-leadership how does a person let go of the ego because that's essentially what needs to be done and then have the confidence to be able to hear feedback like that without without it holding them back in a way that hinders their ability to do what they need to do well that could be a whole podcast in itself um <laughs> i would say the the first thing is to understand um when we reference the ego mind right basically there is our intuition our higher self and then there is our ego mind or the mind chatter or the monkey mind or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um it's important to understand that any thoughts that we have that are fear-based are coming from our mind right and aren't serving <clears throat> our higher good so in terms of achieving that sustainable growth, right? It's really important to have a higher level of self-awareness. It's important to be able to discern for yourself um, where your true guidance is coming from versus that ego mind that is just trying to keep you kind of safe and, and playing small. Did I even answer your whole question? <laughs> I went off yeah. on a tangent there. Well, and I love this because we talked about this the other day, and this is something that really interests me. And I, I think that a lot of people would be interested in hearing more about is knowing the difference between your intuition and the mind chatter, because, because a lot of the times we, we say, Oh, well, this is what my, my gut feeling is. I think I did a video once on, should you always follow your gut feeling? And everyone's always like, yes, but I think if it's fear-based or it's a trigger, then I, I don't think it's necessarily your intuition that's guiding you. I mean, it, I, and that's where I think it can hold you back as a leader if you're making assumptions or based, you're making decisions based off of triggers or limiting beliefs from the past, then I don't think you're, you're guiding in a way that is, is effective. Does that make sense? Uh, it totally makes sense. Okay. And that's where, as a leader, when you are making a decision, uh, not only do you want to have enough of an awareness to know the difference between the fear-based thoughts and the intuition, but you want to also question the motives behind your decisions. Mm. Right? Okay. So yeah. if we're making a decision to do something because we're afraid, right? That we're going to get, um, that our boss won't like it, or we're gonna get reprimanded, or there's some kind of repercussion, right? Are we right. making the, the decision for, that is best for the team and the business, right? Is that our motive? Or is the motive behind making the decision that we wanna be liked? Because right. if it's the latter, you can never make any everyone happy and that's really important a really important point because a lot of high achievers are actually also people pleasers ah uh, yes <laughs> very familiar with that so am i i'm a recovering people pleaser myself so <laughs> <laughs> we tend to attract each pleaser. other too <laughs> yes Yes. So yeah, questioning the motives uh, behind your decisions are really important, right? Because again, um, a great leader makes decisions based on what is not just for their highest good, but for the highest good of all. And you can increase your ability to make more of those decisions in leadership by 
bleeding from within, right? By being driven to grow on your own path and through that, you're then able to help others. Right, and I, I want to I come back to something that I feel like is very important that you just stated that happens more than I think people uh, tend to admit that it happens. And that's when they're making decisions, when they know what the right answer is, when they know from their heart and their soul that what they're doing isn't the right way or what's going on within the organization or the team isn't the right thing. And what happens when we tend to ignore what we know for a fact is true, like not just a fact, but we, we know we've, we've studied it. We've reflected it. We know enough that if what decision needs to be made, but we're going against that. That's when I feel a lot of chaos can happen in the workplace. And that's a lot of the times when mistakes get made. So they, t they talk about this a lot in, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book, Crucial Conversations. Oh yeah. So okay. So they say like a lot of things happen in hospitals because a nurse doesn't speak up and say, so being a leader, I'm saying all this to say, being a leader isn't just a title. It's taking, taking the lead to speak up and use your voice and have that confidence that if you don't do that, then something actually even worse may happen. But because they're so afraid or they don't have the confidence in what they believe because they think something worse is going to happen, then they don't do it. But then what ends up happening is something even worse than they even thought in their mind ends up happening. And then it affects even more people. And I think, I think it's teaching people but that, that this can be a skill that is learned. It's not something that everyone's born with. It takes time and it takes practice. And it's something that can be developed. Absolutely. Every decision that we make, perceived good or bad, you know, has an impact. And the thing is, too, is that we also, you know, we, we underestimate our power to create our reality, right? We aren't a victim to our circumstances. Mm -hmm. We can decide at any time to start making different decisions and to change our perspective on things. Um, I love the, that. The idea behind, right, striving to be a, a great leader is, is really, it starts from having that awareness within. Right, and I, I wanna speak to something because I've had this happen with tons of clients of mine and even friends of mine that were like, ready to make a job change. And they were just so stressed out and so like, they were just so sick. Like they waited too long basically. So they couldn't even stand to go into work anymore. They were having panic attacks. Some people were crying. And I, I said to them at one point, I go, well, here's what's going to happen. Either you're going to make the decision to leave or it's going to happen to you. And many of the times those people would end up getting laid off or they would get fired. And in some circumstances, some of the people would end up quitting before they even had a job. And what they found was that when they released that energy of, they, they felt this relief, basically, and it opened up this new energy for them to manifest an opportunity even quicker. And so if you're not able to control or have self-discipline over the current situation you're in, I think that it's something that's going to happen to you, basically, if you don't take the control, decide to create that, create what you, your heart desires, basically. Right. You're talking about feeling out of alignment and, and yes. we don't have to feel out of alignment. We do be when we're compromising our own integrity, when we're compromising our own strengths and values. So this is probably going to sound very simple, but it really is that simple. And that is looking to align your mindset, your desires, your actions, all with what you really want for your life. When you do that, then these other problems don't happen. Right. I completely agree. And, you know, we're in an unprecedented time. Uh, we're in 
a lot of uncharted territory right now. And I know a lot of leaders out there are feeling challenged in how to move forward. And what we're talking about here today, the answer to being the calm in the storm, no matter what happens now or moving forward, it starts within. It starts with getting aligned and then you're able to help your team achieve that as well. And we all know happy people, happy business. Right. I completely agree with that. Well, and I think it's, it's, it's also very difficult right now because everyone's talking about the economy and the numbers and that's still the, the focus is that's not where it needs to be. Everyone's trying to make sure the business doesn't fail or go down or, you know, that's what everyone's talking about as the solution. And I think like, like what you said, if, if you focus within and you lead from within, then everything that comes from that is going to, it's going to just come with ease. Not, not saying it's going to be easy, but it won't be so forced because right now I always, I always tell people, it's like, okay, if you're going through a divorce or you're going through a breakup or, you know, a death in the family or anything major, like, do you, do you really feel present at work? Are you performing at your best? No. So we have to be a compassionate leader and, and be there to talk to our, you know, employees and our, the people that we're working with. And once people feel like they're valued and they're cared about, then they're going to want to do the work. Are they going to be performing at their peak level? <laughs> Probably not for a while. I don't think anyone is. Uh, but if we can help them through this transition and we look at people as people, not numbers and how can we, how can we meet these goals still during this time? I don't, I don't think that's going to work. And I, I don't even think people have the energy to do that anymore. And they're looking for a different way. Yeah. I mean, when you are, we need a more sustainable way right. when you are focused on your growth and you have a higher level of self-awareness and along with that, a willingness to see other possibilities, then that changes everything about yeah. how you're looking at business, how you're managing your people. Right. And I don't even know if I don't even, I feel like people are just trying to survive right now. And, and they're all, they're just focused on how do I survive by making the money basically. And I feel that if people were already at a place of peace, that that's, that's when creativity and innovation come when we're not in a survival mode. And so if they were already a stressed out leader before, then let me give you an example. I well, used to work. Oh, yeah. I mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. What you were feeling before is going to be magnified and I, I, it's physical, right? Because our mind, body, and spirit is connected. If you're in a place of fear, you're contracted and you're not open to receive new ideas. When you right. feel at peace, you're open to right. receiving creative ideas. You're you're open to the solutions. The, the thing is, is to be able to lead from a place of inner peace, from a place of awareness and focus versus fear, because fear is very reactionary. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, whenever we make decisions from a fear-based place, there's always an there's always a negative impact, right? Whether it's right away or, or later, but there always is. Right. Well, I think people are scared to, to pause and be in a place of being versus doing. And the example I was going to give when I used to work in the event industry, so I used to run banquets and events, you know, for hundreds and thousands of people. And I remember even during the events, when we were in the highest like peak of the event, when we're like getting the food out, you got to get the food out to people as quickly as possible so that it doesn't get cold. Right. And we'd always have a plan for the event. 
But when I noticed that my staff was getting stressed or they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing, I would pause. In the middle of all of that, I would say, hey, guys, come together real quick. I'd say, everyone take a deep breath. Let's refocus. We got this. So most people would think that's crazy, that I would pause in the, the middle of dinner service, the most important part of the entire event, right? But what I did was I allowed them to refocus. And then they went out and they were able to get the job done. And I think so many people are scared to take that pause because they think that if they, they for one second, stop doing that, they're not going to get the results. But when you take the time to do that, the results often end up better, basically. Absolutely. Because you're taking that time to step back and allow right. yourself to open up, right? To... Mm -hmm to receive clarity that's so important it it really really is and and what you said about everyone a lot of people feeling like they're in survival mode right now it's so true but what we're talking about today in regard to leading from within right uh this is something that can apply to everybody the key to being calm and to feeling inner peace is setting a t aside that time for yourself mm -hmm. every day uh, to reflect on how you're feeling, to understand what you can learn from your experiences, and be honest with yourself about what you want to change going forward. Right. That is what will bring that inner peace and so whether it's this event or another world changing event you're always going to be able to rise above and not let the fear get the best of you and it's not that fear ever completely goes away you just learn how to move through it it's important for us to allow ourselves to feel all the feels but we want to stop and visit and not unpack and stay. Right. Well, and I'd like to kind of speak to you. I'm not sure of your personal experience with this, but it was a little bit of a struggle for me to get into that practice and, and also not to get into the practice just to get an end result. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of the times when I, when I first started meditating, it was like to manifest and, I realized that it was working, but it was like, it was coming in and out basically. And when I realized that that needed not to be the end goal anymore and that I was building up a resilience and then I noticed myself changing in different circumstances that would normally upset me. That's when I saw the value in it, having that, that peace and that calmness through times that would normally stress me out. And I like to tell this to a lot of my clients. So it's not always going to be easy. It's, it's like you're reprogramming your brain and you're, you're building a new muscle. And I always like to mention Dr. Joe Dispenza because when I first read his book and he talked about how 95% of what we do by the age of 35 is subconscious, I was like, ooh, you know, a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders because I thought I was the problem the whole time. And when I realized that this was how my body was programmed and that it was going to take a lot of practice for me to, to change that, just like it takes practice to be go become good at anything, your job, a sport, anything. And, and I think that the people need to understand is it takes patience and it takes time and it takes being compassionate and nurturing towards yourself like you are for everyone else, especially if you're a people pleaser, like you said. A lot of leaders are always focusing on how can we make other people happy. And it's like, if you don't take that time to develop that practice for making yourself happy, your, your cup is never going to be full because you're always pouring out. Yes, that is all absolutely true. Um, meditation was life changing for me. And what you said is really true about that it is like working a muscle learning how to recognize your intuition as guidance. That's also like working a muscle. A lot of people say they can't do meditation, but it, it's a process of transformation, just as losing weight or anything else is. What it comes down to is there is no magic pill and you have to want 
to grow. You have to want to no longer be a victim to your circumstances and nobody can want that for you except you. Right. And, um, you know, I'm really passionate about what we're discussing today because I think you said at the beginning of our conversation is that, you know, a lot of what we're talking about isn't necessarily something new, but what I don't see a lot of discussion around, or it's just not a streamline out there, is how to bring all these pieces together, right? It's how to uh, lead from within um, and, you know, effectively set that example for your people as well. And um, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I'm super excited that you and I have actually joined forces on this, right? Like we've decided to create a group where we're going to be guiding some leaders through how to piece this all together and how to lead in this new paradigm. Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited too. And I think it's just a natural organic thing because even after the first time we talked, I mean, we kind of stayed in touch and a lot of our content kind of is interwoven and it takes going through the experience and also successfully guiding others to go through the experience to kind of see what works and what doesn't work. And when you see it work over and over again, you know that it's not just it's, it's not just what they call woo woo, right? And that people are already living it, but they're keeping it separate. They're keeping everything in separate compartments. And I think now is the time to bring it all together. And they call it work life integration, but integration, but it's so much at a deeper level than that. You know, that's such a buzzword, but it's really leading from, I don't know, your heart and your soul and allowing your beliefs and your value systems and your connection with your higher self to be a part of who you are and how you show up every day. It is absolutely. It's leading from the soul. It's leading from the essence of who we are. And, you know, God has a purpose for all of us, for our lives. And that purpose for our life always involves doing something that is of service to others and doing something that aligns with our strengths and our values. So when we yeah. focus on that, when we focus on our growth and we focus on getting honest with what we want to do and we take action toward that, then everything else truly falls into place. And I'm really, really excited to partner with you and to start to help others piece this together and walk through this. And what's great too, is that, you know, you and I both have that professional background, right? So we really understand how to bring it all together. Right. Yeah. And it's so funny. I, I have to mention this because I, for the, for the longest time, I kept keeping them separate. And I finally realized I didn't have to do that anymore because for me, I'm very passionate about creativity. So I, I have to be creative, right? So creativity, branding, marketing. And I used to keep, keep, keep thinking I had to choose one or the other. And what I realized is I was attracting clients that were in this space too, and that they didn't want someone that didn't understand what they were going through. And and that the way they were going to market and brand themselves was going to be completely different because what, what is going on is, is completely different in the world. There, there hasn't been anything really like it. And so I think bringing that all together and having a, a, that clarity that you're talking about, I think it's interesting. A lot of people say they don't know what they want to do, but I really think they do. They just don't know how to get to that answer. That's I think exactly that's something spot on. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly something they, <laughs> they just question whether or not it's possible. Um, yeah. So anyone who's interested about, you know, learning more about what we're up to with this new mastermind, it's launching on April 20th. So uh, anyone listening, feel free to reach out to us. You can always get a hold of me through 
uh, my website, jenniferspore.com, or reach out to me on LinkedIn. And, and Tony, where is the best place for others to find you should they want to connect? Yeah, LinkedIn's the best place. So T-O-N-I-B-U-B-B, Tony Bub, or I do have a website, but LinkedIn's always the best and easiest place. Awesome. Tony, thank you so much for coming back and, and joining me for this really important conversation today. And I'm just really excited about, about how we're moving forward. Yeah, I agree. Thanks so much for having me. I'm looking forward to bringing this to the world. Thank you for listening to the Awake and On Purpose podcast. Please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awakeandonpurpose.com so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world, visit us at jenniferspor.com. And while you're there, be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration.